Hello, this is our modified, shortened uh, video that we are sending out from Emmanuel United Church of Christ in Ontario. Uh, most of us will be at a drive-in service on Sunday. So this one is being prepared for those of you who um, are shut-ins perhaps, or in the assisted living, or to a very few who uh, needed to pass it on to some non-members. So again, most of us will be at a drive-in worship. So this is just a little bit shorter than uh, the videos that we would normally do for you. So we'll begin as always with our call to worship. Good morning. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done. Remember the miracles and the judgments he has uttered. Now the invocation. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all who call on him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our opening hymn is Living for Jesus. And I think we may have, uh, we, we usually send out a little uh, copy of, of some of our hymns as they appear in our hymnal and a little bit was cut off so at the end when we have the refrain for this uh, it says I own no other master my heart shall and then it kind of stops so the rest of that is my heart shall be thy throne my life I give henceforth to live O Christ for thee alone so I'll turn you around and uh, we'll listen to that and you can sing along if you like so this is uh, living for Jesus. So we'll get that up for you. Just one minute. Sometimes it takes us a little longer.
So we only had a couple of verses, but it's a wonderful old tune. And now we will turn, if you have your bulletin, to the time of silent prayer. We'll take just a few moments and then we'll read our prayer of confession. So let's just take a few moments to bow our heads and speak to God and allow God to speak to us. And now turning to the prayer of confession. Dear Lord, we use your names so casually. We hear your names called out, Jesus, Christ, and in texting, OMG for Oh My God. No one really intends to use your names in vain, but neither are we really calling on you in those times. We reserve that true call for when our lives are in disarray. Yet, you always hear us. Help us to call your name daily in prayer, in thanksgiving, and for guidance. We know you are close by. Amen. God knows our every weakness and loves us still. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Through Jesus, we are free to love one another, to forgive one another, and to be forgiven. We are given new life. With full and free hearts, let us answer God's gift with our praise, devotion, and service. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew, but we will also reference Mark's version of this. And in some Bibles, it's got a little heading that says, Jesus Walks on the Water. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And these were the crowds from the sharing of the loaves and fishes. So he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God the gospel of the Lord. We've all heard the expression, oh, that person, they think they can walk on water. We view someone who exaggerates their worth or abilities as having a Jesus complex, as thinking they possess superpowers. That's not the case with the disciple Peter. Although he appears pretty confident, Peter saw a ghostly figure walking toward him on the Sea of Galilee. He wasn't sure if it was really Jesus. There's about to be a test on the water. There's a debate, though, about just who is tested here, Peter or Jesus or both. Peter appears to be testing Jesus, saying, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, command me to come to you. Sounds a little like a test. And Jesus counters, saying, okay, come. And Peter steps out in faith. But his faith wavers as the wind picks up strength. And what happens? He begins sinking fast. Matthew's gospel uses wind and wave to highlight Peter's impudence, his doubt, and his struggling faith, all the while dramatizing 
the compassionate response and the divine intervention of Jesus. Peter had to swallow his pride and maybe swallow a little seawater too. Luckily, the Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake. Somehow, whenever there's a question of faith or understanding or obedience, when we read in, in scripture, it's always Peter in the middle of it. Peter actually represents all the disciples and he also represents us. He is our official stand-in. Peter gets things wrong, he doubts, he gets fearful, but he speaks up. He speaks up about the things that are on his mind and our mind. And in speaking up, he gets corrected by Jesus and even disciplined by Jesus, but he's never rejected or cast aside. We remember when Jesus misunderstood the whole meaning of the transfiguration. He wanted to busy himself building three tents. Peter needed to be told to listen a little bit more. Still, Peter continued to misunderstand the whole mission of Jesus. At one point, Jesus had to ask Peter to stand down and get behind him, calling him a stumbling block. At Holy Week, Peter resisted having his feet washed by Jesus at the Last Supper. Finally, Peter denied even knowing Jesus. He denied him three times. But even with all these errors, Peter came to the resurrected Christ in humbleness, and he was forgiven. Peter was charged by Jesus to feed the sheep and tend the lambs of the earthly kingdom after Jesus had ascended to heaven. Jesus never rejected Peter as a person. He corrected and disciplined him, guided and forgave him, but Peter was always loved. So Peter's faltering faith on the waves of the sea, well, that's just another example of his questioning nature and perhaps his youthful arrogance. Peter is a disciple, but like all disciples old and new, he's human, he's flawed, he's afraid, and doubt creeps in. But even as Peter sinks into the waves, he knows where his help lies, not with his brothers on the boat, no, his help is only in Jesus, and he calls out, Lord, save me, and Jesus does. Actually, Jesus saves them all, because we read when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. So this walk on water in Matthew reminds us of our human frailty and our need to put our faith in Jesus. It's another testimony to the divine nature of Jesus. Jesus can calm any sea and rescue us from our trials. We could say that this reading is a packaged drama, a test of faith and a grand testimony. And I say packaged drama because it reads more as a lesson than an actual account. The story may be just a little too perfect and a little too compact. Some things are missing. It lacks some details. A near drowning is a harrowing experience, but there are no discussions about it or questions, no thank you, just this patent chorus of truly you are the son of God. But even that phrase feels like it was an afterthought, perhaps inserted there. We know these disciples, including Peter, aren't really convinced of Jesus' divinity yet. In the remaining chapters, they will all doubt Jesus again they have a long ways to go. The idea of the gospel writers perhaps borrowing some stories from each other is nothing new. So packaging and repackaging gospel stories isn't new either. And we know that in Mark's gospel, we read Matthew's today, but in Mark's gospel, that was written a little earlier. So it's possible that today's reading in Matthew was borrowed from Mark's account, his account of walking on water, and just changed a little bit. Both Gospels begin right after the feeding of the loaves and the fishes. Jesus retreats to pray and the disciples set off in their boat, but there the stories diverge. Mark, the earlier Gospel, tells the story differently. His version. When evening came, the boat was out to sea and Jesus was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against the adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. 
he intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking, they thought he was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Hmm. Look at this different sequence here in Mark. Jesus sees the wind. He walks across the water. He's kind of taking a shortcut to check on the boat. The disciples haven't called out to him. He's just coming out to check on them. As a matter of fact, we're told he intended to pass them by. But they saw him. They caught him water walking, and they were afraid. He reassured them with that phrase, it is I which is a version of the greater Hebrew pronouncement of God, the great I am. Jesus calms their fears. He gets into the boat and the wind ceases. A slightly different lesson. Yes, Jesus walks on water in both. His divine nature is on display and he looks out for the men. He calms their fears and he quiets the sea of turmoil surrounding them. But Peter isn't heard from at all in that version. And once Jesus in the boat, there's, there's no chorus of, truly you are the Son of God. No, in this version, the disciples are astounded, but not convinced of Jesus' sovereignty. It says they didn't understand about the loaves and the feeding that they had witnessed the day before. Jesus was great, but was he divine, the Son of God? It seems the disciples are yet to understand this because their hearts were hardened, and their minds were closed to that possibility. One lesson that we could take from that little phrase there is from the Hebrew Psalm that says, if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. So we have two versions of this water walking. And we say, well, which story is correct? Which is authentic? Which one should we remember? If we were to let a week or two go by, and then we were asked to repeat these stories, we'd probably leave some things out and maybe add some things in. Each story has a lesson for us, and each should be read in the light of the whole gospel of Jesus because they are each stories of Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear, things I would ask him to tell me if he were here, Songs by the Wayside, Tales of the Sea. We remember that old song. So what truths can we glean from these tales of the sea? Well, we can start with Peter. His plight reassures us that we can call on Jesus even if we are sinking in despair. The image of the drowning Peter is like another Hebrew psalm. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. We've all been in those waters, and we've all called on Jesus, and he will answer us and save us in ways that we may not fully understand. The psalm continues to remind us, Your way was through the sea your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. Another thing to note, especially in Mark's version, is the constant presence of Jesus. Even when separated from the disciples, Jesus was watching out for them. Even without them calling him, he came to them, not to intrude, he was even going to pass them by, not to intrude, but to be present near them. Because we're human, we'll experience many times of fear and doubt. But as Christians, we have a blessed assurance. If our minds are open and our hearts aren't hardened, we'll sense that presence of Jesus. It's been said that to recognize Christ's presence with us is the antidote to fear. The living Christ senses our fear and hears our call, even if that call is a silent one. 
If we find ourselves in a sea of trouble, if we're sinking in doubt, if the waters of life have come up to our neck, if we're paralyzed with fear, having no prayer or verse on our lips, if we're caught in a whirlwind, we need only remember Jesus is our constant presence and believe with all our hearts that he is truly the Son of God. Then he'll hear us and the wind will cease. Amen. Our hymn is an old one, but I think still familiar. It's called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, and we're going to hear it as a medley. So I'm going to turn you around, and I will find that particular one, and we will listen to it. I have decided to follow Jesus.
They added a, a little refrain to that, which was very nice. So let's take a moment now in prayer together, and we'll follow it with the Lord's Prayer. So just a moment in prayer. Lord, we pray for all who call upon your name. We pray in gratitude because you hear our pleas, whether spoken or unspoken. We pray in thanks for this day and this time together. We praise you and remember you as we make the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will, is our, is our custom, have a benediction and sing ourselves out with a song, God Will Take Care of You. So I'm going to turn you around. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. And we will sing ourselves out with God Will Take Care of You. Coming up. This takes us a minute. I hope. Just takes a little bit longer. <laughs> 